Well, Steve White, Steve White's 89. Well, I am near the end of my gay movie marathon. I'm down to um, some of my favourites. I left the best for last. And I'm down to Jeffrey, the 1995 film starring Stephen Webber as Jeffrey, Patrick Stewart as his friend Sterling, uh, Michael T. Weiss as his love interest Steve, um, Brian Batt as um, um, Sterling's boyfriend. It also has a lot of cameos from a lot of people. Um, like Christine Baranski, Victor Garber, Catherine Mannheim, Scorny Weaver, Kathy Najimy, Ethan Phillips, uh, Peter Maroney, Maloney, sorry, um, Nathan Lane, Olympia Jakarkas, and Jimmy Somerville. Um, it's basically the story of a gay guy living in New York who is scared into celibacy by um, the state of the AIDS virus and just how complicated and scary it's all become. It's just too much. And he decides, I'm not having sex again. I, I'm just I'm just stepping out of it. Um, and, of course, the very day he makes that declaration, he meets the hottest guy in the gym, Michael T. Wells, Michael T. Weiss, um, from Pretender fame, if you saw that show, The Pretender. Um, everybody watched it back in the day. Um, he's in the gym working out in his little white shorts and, you know, everything's on display. I think he had some assistance with that. Um, but he gets Steve's attention. But, um, I mean, Steve gets... Jeffrey's attention, but um, he runs away basically because he's just too scared. He's, he just can't handle it. Um, his friends are frustrated by him because despite, you know, the current state of state of AIDS, they are um, still living their lives. Um, um, Sterling, his partner, who uh, is a performer in Cats, actually has HIV and he's managing it. Um, and yeah, he's just struggling. Um, he bumps into Steve again at because um, he's a cater waiter. He bumps into him at a at a gay gay event, a AIDS fundraiser, um, hoedown for AIDS, I think it was, um, which is hosted by Christine Baranski. And um, there's a wonderful little fantasy where they're having like a dance and everything. Um, but he still runs away. Then he goes to a self help course, which is run by Sigourney Weaver, who's just full of it. And Kathy and Jimmy's one of the um, people. Um, he goes to a, um, a, a sex addicts uh, anonymous club. Um, that's where we see Victor Garber and um, Ethan Phillips and some of the others there. Um, so there's a lot of little scenarios, a lot of little jokes, some funny scenes, like the moment where um, um, Jeff and Steve kiss in the gym. Um, they sh they switch to a shot of the audience, and there's two boys and two girls watching, um, and the boy's like, ew, gross, and the girl's like, ah, it's pretty funny. There's lots of little moments like that. Most of them work, and they're quite funny. A couple don't, but, you know. Um, they break the, Jeff breaks the fourth wall um, throughout the film talking about what he's experiencing, and um, he, he keeps getting pursued by um, Steve, and eventually he's... he's you know, um, chased down on the street and he promises to have a date with him and then not long after that he reveals he actually has HIV and Jeffrey continues to, to say yes, yes we'll go on a date and then he cancels last minute on the phone um, and Steve bumps into him on the street, you know, not that much later. Obviously he wasn't um, busy working and so forth and he tells him where to go, they kept running into each other and um, doesn't go anywhere because Jeffrey is just limited and scared and his friends like I said are getting frustrated with him because like I said they are living and he's not. Um, eventually he decides to leave New York um, and then Darius who's been getting sick throughout the film um, dies quite subtly of a brain hemorrhage. Um, Patrick Stewart's performance is really great in this because he's like just leave you know, you're not part of this, you know, you've stepped away, you're not part of this, you're, not, you're just on the outside, you're not, you know, and he's like, you know, I, I don't hate you, like, because he's just so angry with him, and <sighs> there was talk of an Oscar nomination for um, Patrick, he didn't get it, but um, he did get a lot of attention for it, it was very good, he was very good in the role. Um, eventually, we see a really awesome... Um, um, scene where they are at um, one of the gay pride marches in New York, the, the big one, I guess. Um, I guess it's, I don't know if it's the same one that they featured in um, True For Dare and Bed of Madonna, but the, you see a lot more of it. It made more of an impact of me because I saw this film when I was pretty young. It was the second gay film I'd ever seen after Priscilla. 
Um, in fact, Patrick Stewart and Scorny Weaver and important people were in it really made a difference. It made about three and a half million in the box office. It wasn't a big film, but um, you know the right people saw it and got, I got I saw it on video on my little TV, um, and later I got it on DVD and still watched it on a small TV with the black bars and everything. And this is the first time I've actually watched the DVD I brought since on like a big screen. I'm like, it's so weird because I just it's been so long since I saw it, which. I guess because I had such a good memory of it, I didn't feel the need to watch it over and over again. Um, but yeah, eventually Jeffrey pulls his head out and um, he stays in New York and he actually um, calls up Steve and says he has to see him, that's an emergency, he shows up and he's got dinner for him. And he eventually coaxes him back into dating because um, when he saw him at the, um, I meant to mention, we saw him at the Pride March, Steve so was organising groups and stuff like that. And that's where Olympia Dukakis and her post-operative transsexual son appear. Um, and um, he still flirts with him, but then he still sort of runs away. But it doesn't matter because he's dating a really hot guy. But then that breaks up a couple of weeks later. And then yeah, he, he calls him up, he arranges a dinner and he entices him to date him again and assures him that he's, you know, up to the challenge, that they, they can do this. And the film ends with them... Um, dancing. Mother Teresa's on the piano. She makes a few appearances, and I dare anyone to prove it's not the real Mother Teresa um, with a cigarette <laughs> and some twinkle, twinkle. Um, I was going to say twinkle toes, twinkle. She's tickling the ivories. I don't know, but um, it's a great film. It's um, it's it's got some some hard moments um, after Darius passes with Patrick because he's Patrick Stewart, and um, Jeffrey does need a good hard slap in the face kick in the ass because he just he's not living he's just checked out and that's not the way to deal with this and it does make me think of s some of the people in the current situation now and you know looking at you know how to live post crisis but um yeah I love it glad I've got it on DVD apparently it was released uh, on blu-ray a couple of years ago in 2019 um I think I need to get that but um yeah, I'm going to go for free to share, like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't seen Jeffrey, see it. If you have, let me know what you think of it. I love it. It's one of my favourites. Um, it's it's pretty much flawless. It's just it's pretty much perfect. It's just a great film. Um, and I'm just glad I saw it when I did. When I, I The first year I'd sort of come out and moved to Melbourne and was in the city, and um, that was sort of the lifestyle I was going into because um, medication for, for HIV hadn't really hit the streets, so to speak, it wasn't really affordable, it wasn't really available, and it was all still very uncertain, um, so I still related to that, even though, you know, things were getting better, it still was a very scary time to sort of go into that scene, into that environment, and, and um, you know, I just love the film, it hasn't really aged in, in a way, but it totally has, but it hasn't, because it's just so good, but I'm going to go, I can just talk about it all day.